committees, uh, what uh, the United States Senate was doing. What was so controversial at that time? What did you say you were going to do? Well, I, I set out that we're going to create a human being that we would obviously like to, to think that is going to be a healthy child. But then, of course, the, the whole controversy came about from um, Dolly the sheep. And everybody obviously bring in Dolly as being an unintelligent sheep, which, of course, as we all know, we, there isn't such a thing as an intelligent sheep. And then uh, before the Congress and before various uh, gatherings, uh, there, everybody was trying to make the case that we're going to create problem children, we're going to create monsters, we're going to create mutations, mutations and all kinds of things. And then uh, it, it was all based upon Dolly the sheep that they created. They used 237 eggs, 23 embryos that were created that were transferred in, in 12 sheep. And one gave birth to, to, uh, to Dolly the sheep. And this is not the science that you were going to practice? Absolutely not. First of all, uh, you do not, in, in our business, and in any scientific business, I should say, you do not base any of your findings on one observation. Dolly the sheep was not an example of a scientific experiment. It was just an example. But we do not call science uh, based upon one observation or any of those kinds of things. You know, we do stand-up comedy with that kind of thing, but not science. Science needs to be based upon uh, experimental designs, executions, and statistical analysis, and drawing conclusions based upon the factual information. So you weren't only in the laboratory, you were also traveling, telling your story. Uh, in 2002, you were in uh, Beirut, in, in, in Lebanon. Why? Well, I was traveling all over the world, obviously. I, I, I have friends in Beirut. I was invited to assist them with their efforts in creating an IVF program. And in being there, obviously, I was approached by um, uh, the, the, the spiritual leader of Hezbollah, Mr. Fadlallah. Uh, it was a privilege for me to meet him, just like I met with the Israelis uh, just six months prior to that with uh, President Katsav and his group. I met with the Knesset in Israel. I met with people in Kiev. Uh, um, I met with people in France and England, all over the world. And, 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 and our meeting with, uh, with Mr. Fadlallah was a, a one of a kind because very simply this man was regarded as controversial, a terrorist. And when I was informed that I was meeting with him, they warned me that this man has never met a Westerner without keeping him as a hostage. And I took the, the courage to mm -hmm. be there and meet with him for 42 minutes. And it was one of, you know, a very courageous meeting that we had. And, and this is all uh, documented in the, um, in the film that and uh, the interpreter and the, the, uh, the conversation that you had. Uh, let's uh, step forward to... Um, to uh, 2002, 2003, and, and uh, back in the laboratory, uh, the cell transfer that took place and, and the work that you began uh, that you hoped would be uh, human cloning, uh, which we will uh, reveal at the end of this conversation, at the end of the documentary. Pick up the story from there again. Well, when we set out our objectives in 2001 was to, to create human embryos, evaluate them, assess them, make sure that they're healthy, and then begin to transfer those embryos in utero, in a woman's womb, to create a, a, a baby. Um, and, and therefore, in 2002, 2003, after the debates were cooled down a bit and the controversy began to worn out a little bit, and we began to make sense, then we created the first human clone embryo. Were you doing that his... work in this country? I cannot reveal exactly what the work was done. But, Why? Uh, I think for the safety of, of our laboratories, our personnel, we need to guide and, and guard our, our, our privacy, so to speak. Someday all this is going to come out. You uh, had um, uh, many people, you've told me, that stepped forward, uh, doctors, uh, uh, m many professional people who wanted to uh, use their cells, uh, uh, their eggs, for this purpose. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. We have hundreds if not thousands of people really approaching us. And I get emails every day, even today, that people want to do this. But what we have done is that we, we were cho choosing people that are really understand exactly what they get themselves into. Uh, it's very important that you do not deal with people that, you know, say to you, I'm going to write you a blank check, you do this, I'm going along with it. We had doctors, we had lawyers, we had professionals, we have all kinds of people but I also need to warn 
uh, and, and inform the audience here that we were not interested in, in cloning the Michael Jacksons and the Michael Georges in this world uh, for people that have the money and the fame, but rather we had uh, developed some very strict criteria via which we can take a couple that has exhausted all aspects and all um, efforts to have a child via uh, various artificial means, in vitro fertilization, etc. And then when they exhausted all that, then we can help them. So that was the last resort for those people that could have a biological child of their own. What is the significance of March 2003? Well, the significance was that we were able to see under a microscope the first clone embryo in the history of the world. We created the first clone embryo, uh, and we were ready to transfer it. And that was what I would call in that film a home run. But it failed. It fell in some respects. I think that the embryo was intact. Uh, we were attempting to transfer it, but the, the, the surrogate mother into which this embryo was to be transferred was not re ready to receive it. So it, it forced us uh, strategically to make the decision of freezing that embryo. And during the freezing and thawing process, that embryo was destroyed. At that time, did you begin, or during this whole process, uh, to go back to some of the words that you heard shouted at you um, uh, in the clip that we just saw that you were uh, possibly dealing with uh, a mutation or some severe deformity of, uh, the po of this baby? Mm -hmm. And well, what, what, how did you answer that in your own mind? Well, in my own mind, is every, every baby that you create, no matter what means you use, it's a miracle. So we create miracles every day. Uh, obviously, there are some that there are more dangerous things that we do, uh, you know, any time that you do things in a petri dish. But I have to tell you, in all honesty, that for the last 30 years, been involved in the business of creating children for parents to be, I have never created an abnormal child. And I, I knew from the beginning that this effort would be successful as well because very simply, I wasn't going to allow that to happen. I was going to make sure and I'm going to pull every aspect of safety that there is out there. But even my critics are going to say, are you positively, perfectly, 100% sure? There isn't such a thing in this world, 100% sure. You take risks. And therefore, a lot of the babies that you see walking today there are an awful lot of other babies that have never made it there because we're simply, they either failed during the implantation process, during the growth and development in utero, during the birth or during this or during that. And those are decisions, medical decisions that we have to make during this process in order to make sure that the child that is born is healthy and, and is born to uh, a, a good family. So this, uh, this first embryo was destroyed. Um, uh, and you, you mark that up as a failure. The documentary uh, portrays uh, a, a very emotional uh, Dr. Zavos uh, because it was a setback to you. At that time, you, you said, uh, this is medicine, not politics. This is medicine, not religion. Uh, you also went on to say that um, uh, this is the reality of life, and you re again repeat what we just saw. Uh, that you're not playing God, that you are not God. And you can defend that. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I'm as human as anybody. And, uh, you know, I love being human. Uh, I've never been God, never will be. I'll be with God hopefully someday, but uh, I do God's work. I have to feel that. That I, I, I get up every morning and uh, God put me on this earth to do God's work. And I think that if we all do that, I think that this world would be a better place. That was a number of years ago, uh, this first uh, setback. Uh, uh, you continued your, 